Hello, it's Jennifer, and thank you for visiting. Today, I am sharing with you a way to make some simple cards a little more special by doing a scene change. So basically, when the card is closed, it has one scene, but then when you open it up, it changes a bit. Now, for this, you could use any stamps and coordinating dies that you may have, but I will say little critter images work great for this. So you can see like in this example here on the outside, you have a very simple design, but when you open it up, there's more. So this is also a great way to create a card without too much bulk and also a great way to mix different stamp sets together to form scenes. And I'll talk about that throughout the video. Let's start with this example here. So when the card is closed, it's one little snowman, but then when you open it up, there's another snowman there coming in for a hug. On this card, I use the new Mama Elephant Let It Snow stamp set and coordinating die set. This is such a cute set, and the die set actually has Let It Snow that you can line up with your stamped image or use separately. I like that they put a lot of dies into their die sets. In addition to this, I'm using the, the new Mixed Holiday Greetings stamp set. Now there is a typo in this, and I used the typo image today. I know there's a typo, they fixed it, so don't worry. If you buy the set, the typo won't be there. But in this are lots of different messages that are great for squeezing into tight places, which is very helpful today. So I'll use that set many times. I'm also using the Mama Elephant O Penguin Tree stamp set. I only use the sentiment along the bottom, and I also use some of the snowflakes on a later card. But this is a really cute set with penguins all piled up in the shape of a tree. The reason I chose to use Mama Elephant sets today is that you can mix and match from their different sets and use different images together to create scenes. That's one of the things I like about their stamps. They've got a universal sizing and style. So that worked really well for today's video. There are some other companies that also do that, but if you're looking for a company whose stamps work well with each other, Mama Elephant is a good choice. Okay, let's go into making this card. We're going to start with a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half and it's side folding. You really could use any size card you want. This is just the basic card size that I reach for the most. I'm also using a Misty stamping tool today. Any kind of stamping tool would be very helpful. You could use a stamp positioner if you prefer. I've opened up my card and I'm stamping first on the inside. We'll have one scene on the inside, one scene on the outside, and some of the images will show through thanks to a window. I think it's usually easiest to start with the inside first. I have a sentiment along the bottom from that penguin tree set, and I have my two little snowmen. I'm only stamping one right now. I just wanted to make sure I had room for the other. Now I'm stamping with a Copic Friendly Black Ink. This is Gina K Amalgam Black Ink. And I like to double stamp it so it's nice and dark and crisp. Okay, so now I'm without moving my snowman. I'm closing my card, putting it back in the corner of the Misty. I did remove the sentiment, but the snowman is in the same spot. So I'll stamp that. So now I have that snowman in the exact same spot on the front and on the inside. This will allow us to create a window that will show through to the inside. But let's finish up stamping this scene on the inside. I decided to add the little other snowman so that it looks like they're coming in for a hug, and I'll stamp that with black ink. You could do any coloring, any um, type of stamp that you want. Maybe you have floral stamp layering sets would work for this also. Now let's create the scene on the front of the card. We have our little snowman, and then I have one of the sentiments from the Mixed Holiday Greeting set, and you can see how it fits nicely there in that small space. I also have a little bird from the Let It Snow set, and I'll stamp that with black ink. So I have a different sentiment on the front of the card than I do on the inside. That's another nice thing about using Mama Elephant stamps for creating scenes. The style of text and sentiments that they use is consistent from one stamp set to another. So you can use sentiments together from different sets on one card and it'll look nice. By the way, there's that typo, the S on holidays. Again, if you got the stamp set, it wouldn't be there, but I really wanted to use it here. I did edit it out of the card for my blog post, but I just left it in here for the video. Next, I wanted to create a little snowbank for our snowman to sit on. Now you could freehand cut a wave from cardstock, but I had this other die from Mama Elephant and I decided to use it and show it to you. 
This is the new Woodland Slimline die from uh, Mama Elephant. Now check out all the pieces it cuts. It creates a great scene for a slimline card. That's a long and narrow card. You can see the pieces it cuts here. Well, I'm just using one of the snowbanks from this. So I'm just cutting out a piece of it and I'll use this as a guide to create my snowbank. I thought this was easy enough to do. You could, again, freehand it, or you could use a border die that you may have. So I'll hold this right along the bottom. I'm trimming off the excess on the side. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can take the same piece to the inside of the card and line it up in the same position. I'll just line it up on the bottom and on the sides, and then I know that the snowbank will be similar on the outside of the card as it is to the inside. So now I'll use a black Sharpie to trace along the top of it on the front of the card and also on the inside. I'll use this piece again later to add a little blue ink, but I didn't think of it at the time. So you'll see me do that in a few minutes. Next, I'm using some tiny snowflake stamps to stamp repeatedly around the sky on the front of the card and on the inside. And I'm using Hero Art Soft Pool ink. It's very subtle and hard to see in the video and in the photos, but it's there, I promise. And I did add another bird to the inside of the card. Now it's time to create a window on the front of our card. I want the snowman to show when the card's closed and when it's open. So I'm lining up the coordinating die with the stamped image that's on the front of our card. I'll tape it in place, open up my card, and run it through a die cut machine. I'm using my Gemini Junior machine, but you could use whatever die cut machine you may have. And now we have a window on the front of our card that allows the snowman to be seen when the card is open or when it's closed. So this is the point where I decided to add some blue ink right above the snowbank. So I just wanted a little highlight of color there just to add something to this simple card design. You could definitely skip this if you want. So I'm lining up my snowbank and taping that down. And now I am using a pink and main ink blending tool, which is great for covering large areas. And I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Ink in tumbled glass. I'm starting on the snowbank and then pulling the color up to fade into the sky. So I'm just adding a little bit of ink. Notice I am going over my stamped images. That's because I will stamp, color, and die cut the same images and glue them on top. That way I didn't have to do any masking for this. Okay, now we can remove our mask and it's time to finish off our card. So off screen, I stamped, colored, and die cut the little snowmen and birds. Now I'll put glue on the back of the snowman, pop him into the window so that he's glued on the inside but is lined up with the window we die cut. Now I'll add the other snowman here too. You could make this a one layer card by not doing die cuts and just coloring directly on the card but I like the look of this, so it's totally up to you. By the way, I also did stamp three little hearts on the inside of the card, right where the snowmen are, just to add a pop of color on the inside. To finish this off, I did use my Stardust glitter pen to put little dots in the sky. This looks like snow falling down, and it catches the light nicely in real life. I also use my Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen to color the snow on the snowman and on the snow bank. This is another one of the little things you can do to make your card stand out in real life. The sparkle is beautiful. So let's take a look at the completed card. Please forgive that typo. When you take it out, you have a very simple scene on the front. There is sparkle in real life that you really can't see here, but sometimes when I tilt it in the light of the camera, you can see it a bit. Then when you open up the card, you can see how the scene changes. We have another snowman, a different sentiment, and our bird moved. So you can see how this technique works great for any stamps that have multiple images in them, or where you can use multiple stamp sets together on a card. So in this case, oh, you can see the sparkle there, by the way. In this case, I used pretty much one set. I did take a sentiment from another set, but it allows you to make the most out of your images and fit them all onto one card. Okay, my next card, let's look at it completed first. I think it's helpful to see what direction we're headed. It has a scene on the outside, and when you open it, the scene changes with different critters. Now for this, I only used one stamp set. It's the Mama Elephant Toasty Friends. You can see how they've squeezed in so many different images on here that it's easy to do this scene-changing card technique. 
Okay, once again, I have a side folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Towards the top, I have positioned my little fireplace, kind of top center. I will ink that up and stamp it on the front of the card and on the inside of the card. You can see how using a stamping tool or stamp positioner is helpful because you can be sure that the image is stamped in the same spot on the front and the inside. Okay, I also added a sentiment to the front of the card, and now I am using the coordinating die to cut out the fireplace from the front of the card. Make sure that when you do this, that your card is open when you run it through the die cut machine, so it only cuts through the front. Off screen, I stamped, colored, and die cut all the images I wanted to use. I have my card closed. I'm lining up the fireplace with the opening and gluing it to the inside. I also have four little critters to add. Now, my little doggy here with the s'more, he has a, that like stick with the marshmallow is a little flimsy. So I die cut another one and glued it to the back so it would be stronger. I didn't want it to bend or fold. And it also prevents the color that I added to the image from seeing through on the other side. So I'll glue him to the front. And now we can glue two more little critters to the inside. So in this case, it just changes what the critters are. I did not stamp another sentiment on the inside because I wanted plenty of room underneath to write a personal message, but you definitely could add a different sentiment on the inside if you wanted. So you can see how creating a window that allows you to change the scene from the front to the inside takes this simple card and adds some interest to it. Now you could create the whole scene around it. You could draw like the floor and the walls and all that. I'm not good at that stuff. So I just went with the basic images to create something that changed when you open up the card. Okay, here is a look at the next completed card. In this case, we did some overlap stamping and die cutting. So I'll show you how to do that if you want your windows to overlap. Okay, for this, I used the Mama Elephant Gingerbread Cookies Stamp Set and Coordinating Die Set. Look at all the little images that you can use to build up your scene. So I only use this set on this card. Again, that's one of the reasons why Mama Elephant images work so great for this. Okay, so I have a side folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Again, you can do any size card you want. Since the biggest image is on the inside of the card, I'll start by stamping that. Now I wanted to have a sentiment that kind of curved along the edge of the plate. So I took that long sentiment that I used on my first card and I cut it. I know that's crazy, but I cut it so it only has part of the sentiment. That's a great way to change it. Now I want it to be here, right along the top left corner of the plate, but I want it to be curved. Here's the trick that I do. I have the two images here. I'll close the door on my stamping tool and then I will move over to the door and then move the sentiment to curve it right along the curve of the plate. So you can see how now it has a curve that goes right along with it. And now I can stamp that with black ink. That's one of the advantages of long sentiments. You can stamp them on a curve. Okay, the next image is the milk bottle. And this one will show on the front and the inside. I'm first lining it up in the inside. And now when I stamp this, it'll overlap. That's okay. You could do masking if you want to, but remember I'll glue die cuts on top so it doesn't matter. Now I'll close the card and in the same position, stamp the milk bottle on the front too. Next I have an individual gingerbread man and I'm going to put him right next to the milk bottle. Again, we'll have lots of messy overlap stamping on the inside, don't worry about that. I'm just putting it there, on stamping on the inside so I can get the positioning right. And then I'll stamp it on the front too. That'll be overlapped, don't worry. Then I have my little sentiment here. That's again from that mixed holiday greeting stamp set that I showed you earlier. You can see how because of the narrow size of this stacked greeting, it fits nicely there. Now I did decide to add a little Santa hat onto our gingerbread man. So I'm positioning him on the front there just because it was easier to tell. And I will stamp that on the front and I end up stamping on the inside, but I really didn't need to at that point. So on the inside, you can see it is just a messy overlapping stamping there. It doesn't matter. I promise we'll fix that. If you wanted a one layer card, you would have had to use masking. So let's start doing the windows on the front of our card. I'm starting with the smallest one first. That is the coordinating die for the Santa hat. And I'll cut that out. It looks funny. Don't worry. Next, I'll take the gingerbread man uh, coordinating die, line that up with our gingerbread man. 
and then run that through our die cut machine. Remember to always open up your card when you run it through the die cut machine so you don't cut through the inside of the card too. Next, I will line up the milk bottle. So basically I'm creating one window that will m allow the milk bottle, the gingerbread man, and the uh, Santa hat to all show through from the inside when we add that. So it's just like one big window that's kind of funky looking at this point but there you can see how it shows through. Off screen, I stamped, colored, and die cut all of the different images that I stamped on my card. We'll start with the biggest one first, that'll be in the back, and that is our plate of gingerbread cookies, which makes me very hungry. So I'll clue that in there. Then we will add our milk bottle on top of that, and to make sure it lines up with the window, I will close the card and place the milk bottle in the window, and then press it into the inside of the card. Next, we have our little gingerbread. I'll put adhesive on the back. Close the card, line it up with the die cut window, and then press it on the inside. And then finally, our little Santa hat. I wanted to add a little more something subtle on the front of the card, so I have three little snowflakes from the Penguin Tree stamp set that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And I'm multiple stamping this with Hero Arts Soft Pool ink just to make it darker each time. So that's just something subtle, it's hard to see in the video, but it adds a pop of color on the front. So here is the completed card. When it's closed, it's a very simple scene. You can see the snowflakes there. I could have added some shimmer, I might go back and add some. But then when you open it up, you have a full tray of cookies and another sentiment. And there's plenty of room to write a personal message above the scene on the inside. So in this case, we layered some images to create a window. And we also used one stamp set together to create a scene that's different on the front of the card than it is on the inside. Okay, this next card is probably, probably my favorite because it's a teacher card and I tell you, teachers need more love and respect and appreciation than ever. Oh my goodness, what a crazy year. So I was excited to make this for one of Lila's teachers. Now with this card, I did add some layered die cuts to the front before creating the windows. So I wanted to show you this doesn't need to be simple cards. You can build up layers. For this, I use the Mama Elephant School Rules stamp set, a favorite of mine. I use this one quite often. And you can see all the different images from there. I did add some additional ones, which I'll show you later. I stamped and colored my images, and I decided on my blackboard that I wanted to white heat emboss the sentiments. So I colored it with dark gray uh, Copic markers. Now I'm stamping the sentiments with Versamark ink, and then I'll add white embossing powder. So now it looks like chalk on the chalkboard. I may do another one of these cards where I make the chalkboard look like a computer screen because that seems fitting right now. Okay, next I wanted to create those stripes on the bottom of the card. I did that by cutting up some light gray cardstock and white cardstock into little stripes and gluing them down. We'll then create our little scene on top of that. For this, I used the Mama Elephant Quick Strips die set. This is a brilliant set because you have the four dies and each cuts a bunch of stripes that are the same size. So you can grab whatever one you want and use it. I decided to use these two. I cut a few from white cardstock and a few from Simons's Stamp Fog cardstock, which is a light gray. So now I have these perfect stripes that I can use to create a background, or I could use them as sentiment strips, many ways you can use them. It's a great die also to cut from scraps of cardstock to create rainbow backgrounds. This time I'm using a top folding note card. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. I have put adhesive towards the bottom half of my card, and now I am just lining up these little strips that we have, alternating between a wide gray and a narrow white. I just thought it added some interest to this card. I will definitely be doing this again as an alternative to just a simple white background. Okay, now off screen, I stamped, colored, and die cut the images that I showed you earlier, and now I'm just figuring out the placement. So it's nice to have those die cuts ready so you can plan where to cut your windows and so on and so forth. I'm starting with the focal point of the card of the scene on the inside and the outside, and that is the chalkboard. So I'm putting that towards the top center and I will stamp it on the front of my card and I'll stamp it on the inside of the card in the same place. I can be sure it's in the same place because the corner of my note card stays in the corner of the stamping tool. I'll also do the same with the stack of books and Apple. 
I want this to show on the inside and the outside. So I'll stamp it in both places. Next, I'll use the coordinating die for the chalkboard, line it up on the front of my card, open up my card and run it through the die cut machine to create that window. Then I'll do the same with the stack of books and Apple. Line that up, run it through my die cut machine open, and now we have the window on the front that allows us to see the image on the inside. I'll put glue on the back of the chalkboard, pop it into the window and press it on the inside, and I'll do the same with the apples and the stack of books. Now we can glue some critters to the front of the card, and on the inside of the card, I actually decided I wanted to add a few of the gray and white stripes, not many, just a little bit, so it kind of looks like these little critters are sitting on them. So I first glued these down, decided to take them off. I'm using my T-roller to make sure that I adhere this strip straight. So I have adhesive on the back of my strip. I'll line that right up against the edge of my T-roller. And then I ended up putting one white strip and one more gray strip underneath that. Now I am overlapping the uh, little apple image that I stamped there, but remember we're gonna cover that up anyway so it doesn't matter. Once I've glued those in place, I can trim off the excess and now glue my little cr critter images right on top of that. So don't be afraid to layer up things. You can still create windows um, through the cards or through the layers. So I added those stripes to the bottom. I could have done a die cut, like a background die cut instead but it adds a little bit of interest to a simple card. I use my aqua shimmer pen to add sparkle to my apple and to the globe, and then I add a glossy accents for a clear shine. By the way, the two critters on the inside of my card are from the Mama Elephant Sincerely Yours stamp set, which I'll, I'll give you a closer look at a little bit later. But you can see how different images from different sets go together nicely. So here's a look at the completed card. I can't wait to make more of these. So from the outside, you see the sentiment on the chalkboard and you can see the shine and sparkle that we have on the apple in the globe, which really just kind of draws you in. Then when you open the card, the scene changes. We have different critters and we have plenty of room to write a personal sentiment underneath. Okay, my last card example is again a scene changing card. However, this time I wanted to include a lot of stamped images but I also wanted to make a place to write a personal message. So we have a card inside of a card and it's really easy to do. So here's a look at the completed card. When you open it up, you see another scene and then you can open it again for the personal message. So this is great if you have more images or bigger images that you want to use for this technique. On this, I used two stamp sets, the Mama Elephant Santa Baby stamp set. I think these little images are so fun, especially the tree with Santa and the window with Santa, which is the one that I'll be using. He'll be peeking in on the family writing their wish list. In addition to this, I'm using the Sincerely Yours stamp set. This is the one that I used briefly on the last card. Now this one can be used all year round. You have these little bunnies writing letters and you can just stamp just a card to let you know that I miss you with it. So again, this is one definitely all year round. I'll be using this one a lot. And that's how I was able to use it on the teacher card. Now remember this card is a card inside of a card. So the in inside card is a little bit smaller than the outside card as you can see here. So we need two note cards to create this effect. I have two top folding note cards that are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I put little tags on here so you know which one I'm doing at each point. That's just to help you. Now the inside card, one of the cards, we're cutting a quarter of an inch off the bottom. You can see the dimensions there. So the card on the left is like a typical card, four and a quarter by five and a half. The inside card is a little short, four and a quarter by five and a quarter. Let's start with the front card. Again, I have that tab just so you know which one I'm stamping on each time to help you out. So on the front card, I'm stamping my two focal point images, the largest ones, and the ones that will be windows. Now I have the inside card. I'm putting that in the corner of my MISTI stamping tool, even though it's short, and stamping the same images there. Okay, now let's go back to our front card here. I am lining up the coordinating dies, and I'll run that through my die cut machine. Again, this is the front card. So this is the full size card. Now, if you do a little tab like me, just to note um, which card is which, or if you do a post-it note, be sure to take it off before you run it through your die cut machine because it will leave an imprint. 
Okay, now check this out. If I take my inside one, line it up along the bottom there, and close my card, the window lines up with images. But we need to trim that inside card down so that it's a little bit smaller in the inside on all sides. So this inside one, I'll, I'll go ahead and trim off another quarter inch from the bottom and a quarter inch from the two sides. So basically you're taking a quarter inch off all three sides, but not that top one where the crease is because that would turn our note card into two pieces of cardstock, which we don't want. So now we have a smaller note card. We can put adhesive on the back of. So you want to be generous here because you don't want this to come undone. I'll take this and line it up with the windows. So see how I'm lining the stamped image up with the windows and there's adhesive on the back. Once I have it lined up, I'll close our note cards together. So you'll see I'll just press that down into the adhesive and now we have a card inside of a card. So that inside card is cut a little bit smaller, which I think is a nice effect. And our images line up. Plenty of room on the inside to write a personal message. Now I'm putting glue on the back of these two die cuts that I will pop into the window and glue to the inside. So you can see how this shows when the card is open or when the card is closed. Okay, now I wanted to add the rest of everything, but I needed a sentiment for the front of the card. So I just have Merry Christmas, which is cut from one of the mixed holiday greeting sentiments. Stamp that under the window. And then we can also add our other little images. So on the front of the card, I have one little uh, bunny and a mouse. And on the inside of the card, I have two different images. I also used a little bit of light gray C0 and C1 to put a little shadow underneath them. I'm not good at this. I just wanted to kind of put a ground under them. There are some folks out there who can do amazing shadows and scene building. I can't do that. So I just wanted to keep it simple. So let's look at the completed card. You can see a simple sentiment on the front and also some little critters. I did add some shimmer pen to the window so it helps to make Santa kind of stand out up there. Then when you open the card, the critters change and there's a different sentiment at the top. So I added another sentiment from the holiday mixed greeting stamp set. So in this case, if you want a bigger scene or bigger images, you can create a card inside of a card which will allow you to write a personal sentiment inside. All right, I hope you'll give this technique a try. It's a great way to use your stamp sets and coordinating dies that have lots of images, or you can combine different stamp sets together to create the scene that changes from the inside to the outside. If you're interested in these particular products, I do have them linked below in my YouTube description. At the top, I even have a visual supply list link. So you click it and you can see thumbnails of all the products. I also have in the middle here a couple other videos that might be of interest to you with somewhat similar techniques. Thank you for spending this time with me. I pray that you're all staying well and we'll see you again soon with another video.